Who is? Welcome. I'm seeing friends from, from far and wide arriving. Hi, Dorothy. How are you? Hi, Judy. Oh, you're here. That's so nice to see you. I saw that you had emailed me, but I it didn't have a message inside. So I, I, I just realized, oh, she's seen the message. Yeah. Nice to see you. It's so nice to see you. Yay. Welcome here. Been too long. Yeah. It has. It has. Are you on the Upper West Side or? Uh... I am. I was upstate for like five months, but it didn't make sense. You know, uh, I was working at home, but then when it got cold, you know, it's really cold. And I, I was just hearing that. A bundle of heat, uh, a bundle of money on heat up there when it's already paid for in my rent, rent down here. So, you know. Yeah. And so back to the city. Well, a change is good anyway. Yeah. And here I can go out at night, take a walk up there. You know, it's the roads and the cars are crazy. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. So, well, welcome Winter. here. Again. Yeah. So, Danny, are people still arriving? How are we Please doing? Arrive, but everybody, I'll just admit them as they come. You now have 30 people. You've, you've got enough. You should, you should start. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very so, nice. welcome. We'll, we will share a few introductory notes before we begin the program. Tonight's talk is by Dorothy Cummings. Our format is our welcome. We're doing that now and some announcements. Then Dorothy will begin her presentation at around 8.10. We will take some Q&A and we'll have a little time for socializing towards the end of the hour. We are recording this session and in a few moments it will be live streamed to Facebook. It will be uh, posted. You'll be able to find it at the Country Dance New York Facebook page, and it will be up on YouTube. And you can also see previous uh, lore talks there as well. It, it will take a, a week or two before it's posted. Yeah. Uh, if you don't wish to appear at all, if you can turn your video off and you can also start, turn your video off if you're finding you don't have a really good connection. Sometimes uh, that, that helps. Please remain muted during the presentation. And here's a little arrow to show you where your mute button is if you haven't um, already familiarized yourself with it. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use the chat to type questions in at any point during the, the talk. And uh, we have some upcoming events tomorrow, 7 p.m. Chip prints some of my favorite things will be uh, on Zoom. And uh, I think Danny's putting the link if you want to grab it out of the chat. And it also is uh, easy to find the link if you go to the cdny.org webpage on Sunday, 
the 20th at 8 p.m., we have Community Engagement ah. Holiday Edition. You know what, and Margaret? Yes. That actually has gone up in the air, so that may not happen, and it is only tentative. I neglected to tell you. So keep your eyes open. That may or may not be happening. You'll get announcements, and it also will be on the website if it is happening. And I can't tell you more about this event at this point. <laughs> Okay. Uh, did I miss something? Yes. Uh, you can send feedback if you have anything that you wish to communicate to English program at cdny.org. You can make a donation at any point to CDNY, also at the website. And I think Danny is putting the link in the chat as well. Our next country lore will be in January. Uh, we are continuing the series in the new year, and Cynthia Shaw will be with us January 21st, 7.30 p.m., sledding with Cynthia, winter tunes and memories. Tonight's team, myself, Margaret Barry hosting, Jeff Barry is running the Zoom and live streaming to Facebook, and Danny, is, Danny Walkowitz is at the virtual door. Now we know human error there did cause unofficial results in a be, to uh, Biden when Trump actually won. Now that number was quickly fixed, right? We knew Trump won. The president, perhaps though, we can do a meeting. The human error part, which is the fact, he said it was due to software error, not human error. Thank you. Uh, human error. There was human error there. I'm sure it wasn't Zoom error. So, Dorothy Cummings. Calls dances at CDNY and other communities in the region. She is known for her musicality, joyfulness, and energy on the dance floor. And I love her for that. Uh, as English program chair, Dorothy <laughs> created this country lore series and is wrapping up our fall season with this evening's program on the Hornpipe. Take it away, Dorothy. Thank you, Margaret. I have been so looking forward to bringing this information to other people. It's, um, gosh, at least seven years or so now that I've been wondering, well, what the heck is a hornpipe? Um, and then in 2015, um, I had the opportunity uh, to lead a dance program uh, with a theme, and I decided to cover the hornpipe. So Hello, what everyone. We're in the home stretch of our crowdfunding campaign for 16 days in Berlin. There's some sort of so thankful to go broadcast to happening. I'm going to pause until that gets gold, muted. And we're super excited to start production. You can also support our campaign by spreading the word and recommending it to your friends. And by doing so, you can win big. We're giving away 25 free digital access passes and a VIP all expenses paid trip to Berlin up for grabs for you and a friend. Just follow the link in the first comment below this video down there to learn more. Together, we can make the biggest ever crowdfunded history documentary. And to thank you for the support so far, we came up with something special. Here's can our the host, host mute all. Are we there? Yeah, I, I think it was uh, somebody who was listening with headphones and didn't hear the noise in the background with an open mic. Okay. Whew. All right. Anyhow, the hornpipe. So to begin, the hornpipe is a type of tune and a dance that accompanies it. Um, so, but, but what is a hornpipe? There are a lot of different dances that are a hornpipe. Um, there are different looking dances called the hornpipe. There's a reason it's confusing to know even what a hornpipe is. There are so many varieties. It's not so easy to say what they have in common, but it is fun to study and consider the question. Tonight, we'll start by looking at the origin of the word hornpipe. Then I wanna show you uh, videos of assorted hornpipe dances to experience the variety. Along the way, we'll explore some history or anyway, what is known and conjectured about the origin of the dances called the hornpipe. And at last, we'll talk about what we think they have in common and I'll advance my own conjecture or two. And I think we may need to mute again. Here we go. Yes. Yeah, so what is a hornpipe? Our question. 
Apollo 8. A last minute change sets a mission. And I'm hearing a feed again. Is there a way to mute all? That's the craziest idea I've ever heard. Unprimed technology put to the test. I'm just going to pause and hold until we have the background muted. Please, all participants, mute yourself. Thank you so much. Great. And now uh, on to the hornpipe. So what is a hornpipe? Well, it starts with a musical instrument. There's the hornpipe, the musical instrument, besides a dance. It's a wind instrument carved from a horn. We have some illustrations. The first is a single hornpipe. Um, and it's carved from a horn. Um, next, we have a collection of Russian shepherd's horn pipes, and we have Please, uh, the, the, Welsh pip horn. Uh, the Welsh pib horn, which is a, a variety of the horn pipe. And in that picture on the right, you can see the reed. Uh, that's the, the mouthpiece that you're looking into and the reed uh, sticking up the top. The next one is the, the Russian shepherd's horn pipes. Um, the screen sharing is not working. I'm, I'm not seeing the pictures. Um, I am. Everybody else is too. Um, so by contrast, yes. So here we are, the, the Russian shepherd's horn pipes. By contrast, here's an example of a fixed reed, which is tacked down at both ends, uh, allowing it to vibrate only in the middle. Um, and I've skipped ahead. Here we go. Here we go. This is the way that the hornpipe produces sound. And that is the vibration of a free reed. Now you saw that in the Welsh pib horn. Um, this is a reed that's tacked down at one end and it's free at the other, a free reed. Um, in the next picture, you can see an actual free reed, um, which is from a pipe organ. Um, that's got a little wooden wedge um, holding it together. So you see at one end, there's the little um, screws holding it down. And then uh, on the other end, um, you see that tongue coming towards the person between their hands. That's the, the part that vibrates free in, in this instance, a pipe organ. Um, so by contrast, here we go. Here's an example of a fixed reed, which is tacked down at both ends, allowing it to vibrate only in the middle. This illustration is of a clarinet mouthpiece with reed and ligature. The ligature just holds the reed at one place, as you see. So it looks like it might be a free reed as well, but it's not. To sound a clarinet, a person has to put the other end of the reed between their lips and clamp it down. So it is clamped in, at both ends. It's fixed. Um, other examples of free reed instruments that we know are the harmonica, the concertina, accordion and pipe organ, and those others. Here's a picture of an uh, instrument we often, seen, uh, often see at a country dance, which is a concertina. So the hornpipe musical instrument existed widely before the 16th century, and not just in the British Isles. As you saw, we had some Russian hornpipes. We had uh, the, the Welsh hornpipe. Um, this, it's also, a, there's many, many indigenous hornpipes recorded in world music. And we can draw a couple of inferences here. Um, a musical instrument that is constructed from a horn suggests a pastoral history, because after all, people who herd sheep have ready access to sheep horns. There's also, there's definitely a history of sheep herding in the British Isles, including Scotland and Northern England. Another inference we can draw is it seems likely that the hornpipe musical instrument predates hornpipe the dance. Now let's consider the hornpipe dance. A good first question is, where did the hornpipe arise? So next we have a map of the British Isles, just to sort of give us a general sense of where we're talking about the dance. So where, you know, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Where do we think the hornpipe arose? Um, by the early 1600s, contemporaneous writers associated the hornpipe with Northern England, most often Lancashire. Uh, for example, Henry Spellman, whose dates were 1595 to 1623, 
He was a 14-year-old settler in the colony at Jamestown, Virginia, and he wrote an account of that experience in 1609. Uh, this passage from his Relation of Virginia recounts dances um, and their place associations in his homeland. The court of kings for stately measure, the city for light heels and nimble footing, the country for shuffling dances, western men for gambles, Middlesex men for tricks above the ground, Essex men for the hay, Lancashire for the hornpipe, Worcester for bagpipes, but Herefordshire for a Morris dance. Another contemporary mention of the hornpipe in literature um, was from the playwright Ben Johnson, whose dates were 1572 to 1637. And he pointed instead to Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. Um, your, uh, your Furcum jerkum to a dance shall fetch the fiddles out of France to wonder at the hornpipe here of Nottingham and Derbyshire. So, um, Derbyshire is given as another possibility. But um, anyway, of all of these locations, they're in the north of England and they're generally bordering with Scotland. And here's a, a close up map of that section. Um, the map has red arrows pointing to the three places just mentioned in contemporary references and literature. Um, and one green arrow pointed to Cumbria. That's where the Lake District is. And we'll come back to that region later. I just wanted to point it out here. Another thought on where the hornpipe, uh, the dance arose has to do with the name. There are different names for hornpipes, as in the musical instruments, in the British Isles. As I mentioned, the Welsh pig, pig, uh, pibgorn. I don't speak Welsh. However, the dance is called the hornpipe throughout the British Isles. The dance has an English name, suggesting that it arose in England. So these clues suggest that the instrument came before the dance and that the dance arose in an English-speaking area likely the border regions with Scotland. So now let's talk about the dances called the hornpipe. We'll start with a definition by Margaret Dean Smith, whose dates are 1899 to 1997. Dean Smith was an English folklorist and librarian and a member of the English Folk Dance Society. She was acquainted with the folk dance revival of Cecil Sharp and others. And here's what she said in uh, the Grove Music Dictionary. The hornpipe falls into three types. One is a solo dance executed by one person or by two or more people dancing simultaneously but independently. In Scotland and Wales, this has existed immemorially and in England since at least the 16th century. In Ireland, where the hornpipe is not indigenous, it has been competitively developed to championship standards. A second type is a rustic round dance for both sexes in hornpipe tempo, which obtained in England in the 15th and 16th centuries and the early 17th, and perhaps later without the distinguishing name. The third type of hornpipe is a long ways country dance of the late 17th century in syncopated 3-2 time created by dancing masters for the assembly rooms or for private patrons and sometimes termed maggot, delight, or whim. Now let's get acquainted with the various types of hornpipes uh, through videos. Um, I'll start with the version of the hornpipe that's most familiar to those on this call, the long ways English country dance for as many as will, to a triple time tune. Okay, as you watch this video, notice that the dance walk is counted as one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, this is Up With Eileen from CDNY, and this is about a 30 second clip. Here we go.
So that was uh, CDNY. That was taken at the Gotham Assembly in 2014. You can hear musicians Tom Phillips, Jody Kruskal, and Bill Peake. And the caller is Beverly Francis. Again, that was triple time. Another type of hornpipe is the solo dance. And there are a few varieties. The first solo hornpipe that we'll view is a clog dance in duple time. This is a Lakeland hornpipe, as in from the Lake District in Cumbria. That's why I pointed it out with that green arrow before. And that's in Northwest England as well. Um, this video was recorded at the Chippenham Folk Festival in 2015, uh, excuse me, 2013. And the performers are Toby Bennett on feet and Scott Hartley on fiddle. Now, as you watch, I want you to notice the percussive rhythm of the feet. Notice that you can break up the stepping rhythm into one and a da 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 diddle 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 diddle. In other words, there are four equal subdivisions per beat. Per beat, it's an even rhythm. Da 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 da. Let's run the video. What I notice about the Lakeland Hornpipe, it's in duple time with an even rhythm like machinery. It's a solo dance piece and it is just spectacular. How does Tony Bennett, Bennett, Toby Bennett make such pleasing percussion with his feet? Next, I'm going to show you another Hornpipe that's a solo dance performed by the clog dance great, Pat Tracy. In the chat box, Danny is putting a link to her doing a different solo than the one you're watching now. That one is a virtuoso piece where she makes foot percussion that sounds like an entire army marching by in cadence. But that one's not a hornpipe. The video that we're going to watch is, it's actually the first of two instructional videos that Pat Tracy recorded in 1990 to 1991 to show the off the toe style of Lancashire hornpipe. Lancashire is also in the North of England. For Pat Tracy, these are very basic steps. For everyone else, these are clog steps intended for intermediate dancers. Okay, so this example of a solo hornpipe is in duple time, but it is uneven duple time. Listen along and you'll hear her feet beating out lots of triplets, or at least it sounds like triplets to my ear. Instead of that machinery like one e add a, two e add a, one e add a, two e add a, the, the rhythm is more like daiquiri, 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 daiquiri. Okay, so as you listen, hear that uneven rhythm. Let's play the video. There is more to the video, but that gives you the sense of the rhythmic difference. That is that is recorded as duple time and written in music, it's it's a dotted eighth sixteenth. But it comes across, to my ear at least, that's triplets. Da 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 da. So it's duple time, uneven. Um, and that's a hornpipe too. Next, um, we're going to look at a third kind of solo hornpipe. And this is also a clog dance. The dancer is Jane Pollitt. And this video was recorded in 1998 at the Redding Clog and Step Dance Festival. 
Perhaps the biggest difference between this solo horn pipe and the previous ones is the meter. Now, I, I should point out, we've had a little technical trouble with this video in the past, so funny things may happen. Whoops, I'm hearing some background noise again. Thank you. Okay, so um, perhaps the biggest difference between this solo horn pipe and the previous ones is the meter. This one is in triple time. Okay, so counting in triple time, one, two, three, one, two, three, as in uh, the up with eyelidium, bum, bum, ba -da -dum, bum, bum, bum. So out of the solo horn pipes, the music here is most like the ones, the tunes that we hear in English country dance. As you watch this video, you'll hear a lot of this pattern in the foot percussion. One e and a two and three and one e and a two and three and. Imagine yourself dancing to this tune, stepping on the one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, fingers crossed, let's run the video. So that was Jane Pollitt. Um, I mentioned that the foot percussion in that video clip included a lot of the pattern one e and a two and three and. Other times the percussion was quite syncopated and it was not obvious where the downbeat was, uh, the one. It can make you lose track of the triple time amid the spectacle. I did anyway. Um, in a moment, we're going to do a uh, view our final solo video, um, and that's going to be the Sailor's Hornpipe. But first, I, I want to give a little backstory to explain, to the extent possible, how did we get there from here? Because there's no apparent connection or there's no documented connection between the Hornpipe and things nautical until the end, till the mid 1700s, um, at which time there begin to be stage references. Before that happened, there were a lot of hornpipes appearing on stage, but they were not sailors' hornpipes. Um, the earliest known reference to a hornpipe danced on the London stage was 1713. And one of the most popular stage hornpipe dancers was Nancy Dawson, uh, who is familiar to English country dancers. Uh, Nancy Dawson was a company dancer at Covent Garden who sprang into fame in 1759 when she filled in for an indisposed solo dancer and she wowed the audience. They actually, they made her dance it again the next 24 nights because she just was so popular. The earliest known reference, um, uh, oh, here we are with Nancy Dawson. Another familiar name in hornpipe dancing was uh, on the stage was the French soloist Anne Oretti, who debuted in Covent Garden in 1742. The dance named for her dates from 1756. Although that dance is a jig, not triple time. Yeah. Um, and I, I should credit that both those images came from the British Museum. On the social dance floor, the 1760s saw a proliferation of published hornpipe tunes and dances that were not in 3 2 time. It was a kind of a, an abrupt changeover from triple time dominating to things other than triple time dominating. Um, for instance, the publisher C and S Thompson printed three collections of hornpipes of 30 dances, 30 more dances, and then 120 dances a piece 
And of those, uh, fewer than half were in triple time. Thompson's, this, this was Thompson's complete collection of 120 favorite hornpipes as performed at the public theaters. On the stage around this time, there arose a stock character known as Jackie Qatar. And this was the quintessential British sailor, renowned for patriotism and bravery. Uh, and tar, why Jackie Tar? It's because tar was used as waterproofing uh, for clothing, for hats. Um, you find it in the word tarpaulin, for example. Jackie Tar was basically a dumb jock with a heart of gold on the stage. Uh, and a dumb jock with a propensity for drunkenness. Uh, occasionally, dancers performed on the stage in the character of Jack Tar, but this character has no documented link to the hornpipe specifically. With regard to actual sailors dancing, we know that Captain James Cook, whose dates were 1728 to 1779, encouraged dancing on his voyages of exploration. As many of you know by watching Dr. Heather Clark in her lecture video or her Five Things talk. The physical activity promoted health on long sea voyages, and the instruments commonly played uh, on ships were easy, easily transported, the fiddle, fife, and drum. But still, there's no clear nautical link to the hornpipe. It's not clear that they were dancing uh, what we would have recognized from horn as hornpipes or calling them hornpipes. However, it came about by um, the mid 19th century, the sailor's hornpipe, the so-called sailor's hornpipe, was taught all over Scotland and England. Um, think Popeye. The dancer mimes various nautical tasks like hauling rope, spying ships on the horizon, and climbing rigging. Um, the sailor's hornpipe has become a staple of festivals and showcases from the mid 19th century to the present. Um, and it's now a standard in the repertoire of schools of dance that teach Scottish and Irish dancing. Um, it's come down to us in a kind of ritualized form now. Um, I found a, a wonderful video of a dance, a set of dance students performing it in Calgary. Um, so that's the next video. It is the Sailor's Hornpipe last year. Oh, that makes me smile every time. Those, those girls are so proud. I, I just love the big smile on that girl in the front. I believe it's her family that posted it. So, okay, we've seen a, another type of dance called a hornpipe. There's no clogs here. We have gillies instead. Um, oh, if anybody has a guess or, or can name that time signature, go ahead. Is that duple time? Is that even? Is that uneven? Is that triple time? Okay, moving on to obs or ah. Very good. Thank you, Renee. <laughs> I am not surprised you know that. Uh, moving on to other observations. Okay, let's review Dean Smith's definition of 
of the, the hornpipe. According to her definition, the hornpipe has three forms. The solo dance, the rustic round, uh, which I can't comment on because I haven't experienced it, um, and the long ways for as many as well. Well, let's consider what do the dances we've looked at thus far have in common? Um, and as you're thinking about it and you come up with things, please write your notes in the chat box because I, I just find this interesting and I want you to explore this as well. So if you have ideas uh, that move you, please throw them in so that we can uh, touch on them later in the Q&A. Looking at my own ECD resources, I notice a proliferation of triple time ECD hornpipes uh, from the late 1600s into the 1700s. Um, now, that may just be my resources, but that is what I observe from the dances that, that we do as uh, English country dancers. Um, and actually, I have some listed in the, the next slide. Some of these are danced, danced as three couple sets. Uh, in modern times, they have been presumably long ways triple minors. And some of these we do as uh, in a duple minor formation. Actually, lots of them we do in a duple minor formation. That's the next slide. Many favorites here. Um, and these are all these are all the, the triple time uh, English country dance hornpipe tunes. So I want to look at one more resource for the nature of Hornpipe the Dance. And that is the Faye dance notation. Um, the picture that we'll see is the cover page of a dance composition apparently performed by the granddaughter of King George I. Um, and this was the 10-year-old Princess Anne uh, in honor of the king's birthday in 1719. This, this publication, this composition, is a suite of two dances, a stately chicane and a lively triple-time hornpipe. Now, several years before this, the French choreographer Raoul Auger Fayet, whose dates are 1660 to 1710, had begun recording full performances of dance steps in written notation in his standard vocabulary of steps. The French dancing master Anthony Labbé used Fayet notation here, you see his name, in the middle of the page. The Baroque steps used in Princess Anne's Chacon are beyond the scope of my talk, but I find one aspect significant, the relationship between the rhythm of the music and the rhythm of the dance steps. Um, the illustration, the next illustration, shows an example of the rhythm of the steps contrasting with or crossing the patterns of the solo dances. Um, here's the, the rhythm of the music. Excuse me. And the dance rhythm is so these rhythms, you see them stacked on each other, and that's how they would appear in the dancing. The, the music does something busy and then something leaner, you know, more stately, more spaces in between the notes. And the, the dance does the opposite. If the music is busy, the dance has fewer steps, and, if the, the, and vice versa. So crossing of patterns of rhythm. Um, and I... I find this significant, and I'll, I'll go into that in a moment. Um, now, take, take this with a grain of salt. I, I have to. This is a French notation system, and it was a French dancing master, choreographer, and we're talking about how they approached an English dance, the hornpipe. Um, this dance composition could be a very authentic representation of how the English were dancing the hornpipe at the time or not. However, if it is representative of solo hornpipes as danced at the time, it suggests that an, the tension between the rhythm of the music and the rhythm of the stepping is typical of this historic hornpipe. And we don't know that, but if it is, that's what it suggests to me. So what does this inference mean for English country dancing? Well, here we step into the realm of Dorothy's conjecture. But what I take from this record of rhythmic crossing is that the tension between footfalls, 
that are different from the musical rhythm is integral to hornpipe the dance. I take from this that that is part of what makes a hornpipe a hornpipe, that that is the essence. I believe this is why it's such a pleasure to dance to these tunes. We do a simple step to the rhythm of one, two, three is the stepping rhythm, one, two, three, and the tune dances around us. It provides a contrast to our stepping, and that contrast of busy music and simple foot footwork delights us. And now, as you chew that over, um, let's enjoy a few familiar ECD hornpipe dances by video. There are three of them. Um, see what you think of this simple theory of mine as you imagine yourself stepping through these tunes. The first video is of Barham Down. It's about 30 seconds. And this is from GCD, the Germantown Country Dance Ball Prep in 2015. Next, we have Mrs. Savage's Whim. And this again is about a 30 second clip. This one is from the Bay Area Country Dance Society event that took place in 2018. And the music is by Shira Kamen, Judy Lin Lin Linsenberg, Alexa Haynes Pilon, and Catherine Heater. And one more last English country dance hornpipe, uh, the Dusty Miller. And this is a video of about a minute. It's taken from the Country Dancers of Westchester Ball in 2016. And the, the, the caller is Paul Ross. The music is Flying Romanos. It's one round. I'd like to, that, that is the conclusion of my video viewing pleasure for you today. Um, I'd like to close with acknowledgements. Uh, back in 2015, I received direction from Jean Murrow, Graham Christian, and Debbie Jackson. And I was invited to lead a pr program on the topic of my choosing by Robin Russell for a dance. And I leaned heavily for this presentation on the conference papers edited by Chris Brady of the National Early Music Association of Britain. They conducted an in-person conference on the Hornpipe in 1993, and uh, I leaned heavily on this to prepare the talk. So thank you for attending. I am looking forward to your questions and our discussion.
So Dorothy, why don't you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So why don't you just start with a question that was raised um, on, on the chat room uh, about what makes up, uh, uh, Cynthia Shaw raised it, what makes up with Alley a hornpipe? I have taken that now. Inter up with Miley is interesting because that's not the original tune for the dance. That that tune is called the the hare's maggot, um, and actually, let's see. So yum bum bum ba da dum bum 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 yum ba da dum da ya da 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 dee dum dum da da dum. It's that it's that um, driving triple time music. Uh, between that and the period it's from, the, that music I I understand is a hornpipe. Um, but Cynthia, did you have a did you have a bone to pick there, or were you simply looking for a definition, a working definition of the, the triple time hornpipe? No, I don't have a question. I just, I just didn't really quite understand. Like, was a hornpipe something in three two? Was it something and had a, a beat of three? Was it like what what constituted it being called a horn type, a hornpipe as opposed to a triple minor or something like that? Sure. Um, well, that's. I mean, that is part of the the question, but um, it seems to have arisen from. The name of the instrument, and uh, it it looks as though the triple time tunes that were played by that original um, free read instrument were in triple time, and they have that driving quality. And um, uh, I've I've heard it said that um, those dances that are in triple time from that period, and often end with the three descending notes, da da dum, like you heard in the Dusty Miller, contribute yeah. to a hornpipe. Now I have to say I I looked more at what constitutes the the dance than the music, so I don't have as ready an answer for you as I would like. But it's a great question. Okay. There was a follow up by from Bruce Hamilton. Bruce, are you online? Do you want to raise your follow up question to Cynthia's? I'm not he sure he's there, Danny. Perhaps he, he better feel he, he, that. He it. It's pretty much the same sort of question. It, it, it followed actually, I guess, one of the one of the other one of the other things that you would the clips that you had shown, and people were still trying to sort out what made one thing different from a hornpipe and what made something something a hornpipe. It just wasn't always clear to people, I'm guessing. I'm well, wondering. the and the, that's interesting because you're talking about the tunes, and I there are, there are various hornpipe things. There's hornpipe tunes, there's hornpipe dances, and there's the hornpipe step. Um, I, I focus principally on the hornpipe dances, but I'll take a stab at what makes the hornpipe tune a hornpipe. It's triple time dances. It's from that period of generally um, 1750 and before that are driving and even rather than, you know, a waltz and um, syncopated. They also tend to have um, short phrases. So, um, Cynthia, you'll know this from, say, Barham Down, for instance. It's, a, it's um, I believe, four-bar phrases. So four-bar A repeated, a four-bar B repeated, whereas other tunes tend to have longer phrases of eight bars or, or more. So I think that's part of it as well. But I, I, I just I have to confess I didn't delve into as much of the, the musical definition as the dance variety. Uh, Deborah Franzblau, she had a couple of questions that she'd raised, but she asked, uh, Deborah, if you're there, you wanted to talk about the different, whether the different types of hornpipes are unrelated. Solo step dance versus long way CCD, but happen to have the same name. I'm not sure I get the question. I'm not sure. Well, I'm just repeating what she's written here, but I'm not sure if Deborah's online that she could amplify. So I, I am here behind my name. So my my question was the the different types of hornpipe dances um, seem radically different. So one possibility I want to raise is that 
they were each called hornpipes in different times for totally different reasons and have no connection to each other. So that's my question for theory. It's possible, but I would like to counter that with um, some things that I observed in, in reading about these, which is hornpipes were popular. Different types of hornpipes were popular. And the ones that um, that went from the stage to the, the English country dance hall, um, they went there because people were excited about them. People knew about other hornpipe traditions, whether they danced whichever one they danced, they were familiar with it being an exciting kind of dance. And I think that um, they borrowed from what was called a hornpipe. And yeah, yes, I'm sh there were regional variations, but a lot of this got collected from the stage and went back and forth. And I think the people did know about the other types of hornpipe to a certain degree, particularly when they were on stage or when itinerant uh, groups would come to say a new mill, a new mill town to entertain. They were seeing what was what was happening. So I'm not entirely sure that that for me that doesn't completely explain it. Um, I think that there was some. It, my impression is that there was some overlap and that people had an understanding of well, what makes this a hornpipe is X, and I think X was initially the hornpipe instrument, and then later the excitement of the. Uh, the cross rhythms, you know, the syncopation of the stepping versus the tune. And I'm happy to be wrong if anyone knows better than I or has a great idea that they want to share. Part of the challenge, Dorothy, it seems to me, is that the, the hornpipes that you showed that were clogging are so dramatic and so familiar to certain forms of traditional dance that we that we associate with some of the ritual forms of dance. It's hard to imagine them as being part of the same world called hornpipe that's associated with the much more lyrical ECD dances that you that you showed us. Um, I don't have that. I don't have that problem actually. I, I see them as coming from the same tradition. Those dances, those solo spectacular dances, they are exciting. They are things that people want to watch and then they want to do. Now, people may have seen that um, in their village. Um, they may have seen it on the stage and then wanted to call whatever it is that they were doing that was to that music or somehow related a hornpipe. That's the connection I see is that they saw it on the stage or they saw it being performed um, and they they transformed it to a different type. See, those, those hornpipes um, strike me as not unlike the tradition that emerges into some of the clogging but step dancing and African-American dance in the 1830s and 1840s in the United States, whereas the ECD absolutely doesn't. So there's a kind of bifurcation in these in this tradition. Of the clogging versus the stepping. Yeah, I mean the, the dances that you were showing me, the, the hornpipe dances with the sailors and other things, were not unlike um, what was happening in bars, in in saloons, in 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 places like New York in the 1830s and 40s, in which uh, large numbers of among African Americans, among and Irish, were all mixing together and sharing a kind of tradition that that was emerging. And I, and and, and that was of course totally separate from what would, from English country dance, which had fallen out of fashion by that point and wasn't a part of that world at all. Well, there was a transformation in what, what, what became defined as the hornpipe. And earlier on, it, the, the solo tradition remained and changed meter. Mm -hmm. And the English country dance tradition transformed from a, tr a triple time to an other time, uh, somewhere in the, the mid 18th century. Um, one thing I wanna read is what Beverly wrote here um, uh, in the chat. She says, Jean Murrow once said that a classic triple time hornpipe often starts with three even beats, which is like up with Eiley, right? The Harris Maggot, Mr. Isaacs, Mr. Beveridge. So that might sort of a little bit more define a hornpipe with those the three beats and then ba 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 something else happens and then ba 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 something else happens, so um, that might 
the uh, hornpipe tune. Right. So that 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 uh, explanation might define it a little bit more clear, you know, just a little more definitively as far as the the melody goes. I don't know, Beverly. Do you have more to say about about that? I don't know if she's still here. I guess she's not here. <laughs> In that same vein, Chip Prince, Chip Prince wrote that he'd noticed that the phrase is often cadence on the very last beat, as opposed to say landing on the downbeat of the last bar, as the majority of these tunes do. Mm. Uh huh. Cadence on the very last beat. That's what he. That's what he wrote, writes. Yes. Yeah, the last beat of the um, uh, of the tune. Um, if you if you look at the music and you see the chord symbols, uh, the 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 final the final chord and the final cadence to that chord it happens on the very last beat, the final half note. You know the way they're written in three two, um, and so many other tunes. Uh, you know, ordinary tunes, shall we say, non hornpipe tunes that cadence would happen on the downbeat of the last bar as opposed to the last beat of the last bar. So that's just an interesting thing. It, that also kind of helps obscure the sense of where the downbeat is because this cadence happens after that. So, so per, for example, uh, at the end of a phrase of that part well that's the half cadence you know so so um you know, can you doodle very... what you're talking about in the cadence because i'm not sure that i follow uh well the very very end of the tune that's what i mean the the you know the chord the chord cadence the thing that gives you that last five one uh chord wise um uh, so you're talking chord, not meter, not not rhythm. No, not rhythm. Okay, um, that's well, where I wasn't following. Well, the harmonic rhythm, in a sense. I mean, where where the yes, the the uh, uh, I mean, cadence in the harmonic sense, where you land on the one chord, the tonic chord. Uh, I'm sorry, this is if this is too much music theory for uh, for. Uh, just here, here's an example. Um, the end of Hole in the Wall. And that dot, the very end of that phrase, the cadence happens on the very last beat, the last possible moment. Okay, so that's the chord change. Uh, and that's it, and it, sets, it sets it apart. Yeah, yes, chord change. Okay, so it, it has it, it holds it until dramatically late in the musical phrase, so that just as you realize, oh, this is the last chord of the musical phrase, you're launching off to the next round of the dance. Yeah, and it makes it challenging for phrasing, uh, particularly say if you're playing a wind instrument, you know, da 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 da, da. you know, it's there's no time to stop and say. Okay, you know, we'll let the we'll let the pianist doodle to finish out the last bar, and then I can come in fresh on the next downbeat. Uh, no, you're you got to play right then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, it's it's really sort of an exciting. You know, you're on the spot. There's no pause. Something exciting is happening next. We're moving on, moving on. Yeah, the excitement of the hornpipe. Thanks, Dorothy. Thank you, Chip. It's sort of the green sleeves dilemma. If you've ever sung that, green sleeves, or it's no place to breathe in green sleeves at all, because the phrases go all the way to the end. Yep. I I want to apply Occam's razor here and just say. Um, couldn't the folk process explain a lot of this? Things drift, as people were saying earlier, um, the, it's the hornpipe, it's popular, and now I'm doing this and I'm calling it the hornpipe because that's what people call these things. And, and the folk process takes its way and over a couple centuries, 
just about every dance form has been called the hornpipe at one point, not because it's a strict definition, but just because language drifts, people are imprecise, people weren't diligently recording and annotating and uh, categorizing the way we do now because now we have PhDs to uh, give out and everything has to be well formed and defined and categorized. So let's just call everything we do a hornpipe. And let's call jigs reels and call reels jigs because there's a lot of that too. <laughs> So Dorothy, we want to thank you for all the uh, ideas you have seated and the, you're sharing your research, the wonderful video clips and your conjectures that are leaving us with more questions than answers, <laughs> which I personally think is the best possible treatment. <laughs> and we, we will all be chatting about this and chewing on it and coming up with more more conjectures. Clearly, this is not the end of this discussion. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, thank you for your support to, to Danny and to, to Jeff. Thank you all for being here. We'll stay uh, open for a few minutes for anyone who wants to hang out and chat. We'll end our Facebook feed. So thank you for everyone who's been watching through Facebook. And I wish all of you a, a great evening. And uh, it's the end of Hanukkah, so we can move on to to other holidays. Yeah, I can finally something find something else to do with my spare time. <laughs> so Dorothy, uh, several people have asked, and I know there will be an interest in some of the clips, uh, people who would like to be able to see yes. some. Yes, I have those queued up. I can stick them in the chat box now, just waiting till the end of the... Discussion. I'm going to, show them to my granddaughter, I think. I just think they're, they're magical. The ECD ones, of course, we all have, but the uh, the clogging clips in particular, I think, are. There's some cool. amazing clogging stuff out there. I know there is, yeah, they're, they're pretty wonderful. Okay. In the chat box, the full, the oh, full, yeah. full fig for all of these. <laughs> And I want to point out in the chat, Chip mentions that is at his concert tomorrow, which I can remind you about, 7.30 tomorrow evening, he will play a medley of horn pipe tunes and listen for the cadences. Oh, and I just remembered, I have one more, uh, uh, one more thank you, which was uh, Bruce Hamilton sent me a couple of uh, horn pipe pictures uh, yesterday, which was cool. Those were the Welsh pig, pib gorn ones. For anyone interested in some of the links that are in the chat, if you haven't figured this out yet, there's uh, three dots in the lower right hand if you're, when you open up your chat. And if you click on them, it says save chat. And uh, that's how you can save the chat to your computer and look back at it later. Good night. Thank you, Dorothy, it was wonderful. Thank you so much. Great hanging out with all of you. Great job. Really great job. A lot of great research. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have fun with that. It's it's such an open-ended question. Like, where do you stop? I mean, like, I, I find myself going down the rabbit hole of, oh, Welsh hornpipe. How do you, you know, where where does the reed fit in? And like, and then I find somebody who's giving a lesson on how to make a, a Welsh pigorn hornpipe reed. And I'm interested and I'm like, oh, maybe I should join that Facebook group. What am I? <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> We've had a correction. The time of the concert tomorrow is 7, not 7.30. Correct, Thank 7. You. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Chip. Oh, and Dorothy, did you want on. to announce uh, January 21st talk? Sure, let's do that again. We will reprise it on January 21st. We will resume our country dance lore series and our leader will be, drum roll, Cynthia Shaw, giving uh, some winter tunes and related memories. 
Yeah, so be there or be square. <laughs> we'll play some winter tunes and hopefully I'll have some memories. No, it'll be fun. <laughs> You will be there and be to... square. I will be there and be square. David will be there. Um, but no, I'm you'll get the Google Goblin. <laughs> Dorothy, can I ask a question or are you? Oh, please, Renee, yeah. Cutting this down. Uh, I'm curious about, so you mentioned uh, Nancy Dawson and Anne. Oretti. Thank you. Um, do you have any sense of what they were doing on stage? What kind of dancing, what music they were dancing to, any of that? It's hard to say. Now, based on the dates, it, it could have gone either way. It, what I was reading in that, you know, the hornpipe paper that I that I stuck up on the screen, is that it's really hard to tell when people changed from doing triple time hornpipes into, you know, six, eight and duple, other duple time. So, no, you know, the fact that Aretti's Dutch skipper is is in jig time might mean that she did it in jig time, but that that part of things isn't so well preserved. I mean, um this this very they just say hornpipe and I think that everyone understood that it was a spectacular dance and maybe at the time you'd know, oh well that's in triple time or maybe you'd know Oh well, that's definitely going to be in duple time because that's the hot new thing that that anybody who's anyone does as a hornpipe on stage. So no, I have no idea. It does. It does seem to me that there's there's the you know eighteenth uh, century hornpipe, which is more three two, and then the nineteenth century the clogging stuff and the more uh, step dancing stuff that's more nineteenth century eighteen hundreds, and that's more in the dotted you know, real or four, four kinds of meters. And, but I'm not sure how it got, I've been wondering this for such a long time. Cause I only realized like maybe a couple of years ago that the three, two was called a hornpipe. I didn't know that. Cause to me, a hornpipe was always being a clogger, you know? So uh, <laughs> I was always wondering what that connection was. And, and Dan Popovich's example, or, you know, theory about the, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> we have competing Zoom meetings. Anyway, Dan's theory about just the folk, folk process makes the most sense to me, I guess. <laughs> well, one thing that I read in that Hornpipe paper, the conference paper that I discussed, that's like an unproven, it's, it's someone's theory. There was a, a performer, a, a man who's, um, I'm not, I don't, I didn't write down that performer's name, but in around 1760, a stage performer um, did his new Hornpipe. And this one was in duple time. So that one we know was recorded recorded as a duple time hornpipe, and that that was the first recorded one on stage that we know wasn't triple time, according to these documents. And again, you know, I'm reading other people's research, so it's not like I'm going to original sources, but it could be just that from there, you know, that dancer had redefined hornpipe, and then everybody decided, oh, well, we can just call anything that we think is exciting a hornpipe. I don't know that this, that is again, pure speculation, speculation. None of us yeah, were there. I'm, I'm so with, yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, what, what Brene said, I, I've been, I've been doing English country dancing longer than I've been a clogger. But when I started clogging, I understood the, you know, the dotted eighth note that dotted duple time dot, 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 dot to be the hornpipe. And that's what, we would dance to whenever we were doing a clogging hornpipe, um, as opposed to a reel or a waltz, you know. Uh, so, uh, and then I started hearing, yeah, these old three-two tunes are hornpipes, and my mind was blown, and I've just tried to avoid thinking about it because it makes my head hurt. Thank you. This was great. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Shall we say good night? Okay. It's wonderful having you all here. Thank you again, Dorothy. This was my pleasure. If you haven't gotten enough hornpipes, Chip says he's going to include some tomorrow at seven. <laughs> I'll be there. A whole medley. <laughs>